coding for math analysis and this is section 2-5. This is part two. Uh, we just looked at ways to kind of uh, find asymptotes and things that we need. Uh, maybe I will we'll just glance at this, um, how to find vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. So we're going to find the domain, find and sketch the asymptotes, if any, find and plot the x and y intercepts, use uh, interval table uh, to determine some extra points as we go, and then kind of graphing those uh, as we work through this. So here's problem number two, and uh, we're just going to go through kind of all of these steps as we go. I have the graph here. This also says that um, this is um, a hyperbola uh, when we have 1 over x or 6 over x plus 3, or in this case, 7 over x plus 5. These are called hyperbolas, and we will learn about those in Chapter 7, but we probably won't get to Chapter 7 in this course, um, but definitely in pre-calculus, uh, you'll, you'll learn more about um, hyperbolas. And so we'll just kind of go through this one. Uh, this is 2a. It's k of x equals 7 over x plus 5. And first, um, I'm just going to do the find the domain first. Remember, all x, uh, the domain is the set of all real numbers except when the denominator is equal to 0. So um, that is the domain is the set of all x such that x does not equal uh, if I set x plus 5 equal to 0, it'll be x equals negative 5. So x does not equal negative 5. x is an element of the real numbers. I wrote that one in set builder notation. We can write it in interval notation if we want. So um, in this case, I like to kind of look at my vertical asymptotes as well because I just found this undefined value. And um, so vertical asymptotes and probably there's going to be one at x minus uh, x equals negative 5. Take a minute, um, look at a table of values and make sure that that you agree with that and I am just going to state here that x equals negative 5 is going to be a vertical asymptote. For horizontal asymptotes I'm going to look at uh, the powers for a horizontal. Asymptotes. And so I want to look at the degree here uh, as I as I look at this. So the top I is actually the degree is zero because that's like x seven uh, x to the zero power. So um, this is x to the low over x to the higher because it's x to the zero over x to the one just to kind of let you know. And so when that happens, the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. So let's just take a minute. And um, I do expect you to do this kind on graph paper. So if needed, grab a piece of graph paper, and uh, we'll, we'll kind of go through this. And hopefully you have a straight edge. I'm not really lending out straight edges, but if you're in the classroom, I have little pieces of cardstock that I use for straight edges. So we'll put in the vertical asymptote, and you know I have this nice little line drawer, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to be right back here. So there's my vertical asymptote. My horizontal asymptote uh, is at y equals 0. I'll kind of put it in blue. They match kind of what I use there. And then, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, then I want to also see if there are um, zeros, which are x-intercepts or y-intercepts, or see what those are uh, next. So x-intercepts 
are when uh, y equals 0. So we also look at when the numerator equals 0. Well, there's no variable up there, so there are none. There's no, it's not going to touch the x-axis. Uh, y intercepts are when we just put in x equals 0, x equals 0. And so y equals 7 over 0 plus 5. So that's 7 fifths. And um, so 7 fifths is about, is, is not about, is 1.4. So that y-intercept is at 0, 1.4. And I might even plot that 0, 1.4, just to kind of get an idea of where that is on there. So now we actually have this broken into kind of almost new quadrants. We have these things. We want to know, is it up on t above that? or below that. Uh, where is it here? I'm guessing it's going to be above because it's going to touch there. Um, but what is happening in these like four regions and of, of two that are above and below each other, it can only have one value. So what we want to do is we want to look at some intervals. And usually when we're making this interval table, we're going to go from negative infinity. And we usually stop at any vertical asymptotes and zeros. Um, at this point. So there's a vertical asymptote there at negative 5. So our first interval will go from negative infinity to negative 5. We really don't usually stop at the y-intercept. Inter um, and then this one has no x-intercepts, so we'll just go to positive infinity. So I'm just going to have two intervals, negative infinity to negative 5, and negative 5 to positive infinity. And so on my interval table, and you know, if you are more comfortable uh, finding a couple of points uh, for that, by all means do that uh, and uh, as you go. And you know, just because this is because this is our first one, maybe we will. So our we're gonna make an interval table, interval. And uh, then we're going to pick x values that are in there and find our f of x values. And of course, it'll be ordered pairs then uh, as, as we go. So our first interval is from negative infinity to negative 5. And our second interval is, oops, parentheses. And our second interval is from negative 5 to infinity. So, you know, we can choose... You know, we might just choose um, negative 6 or something like that. Uh, we might choose, you know, negative 10 because that's what my graph goes to, to kind of see something there. Um, then if I'm going to pick two here, I might uh, look at, because I do have that y-intercept, I might look at one that's to the left of that, one that's to the right of that, or, you know, one that's past zero uh, as we go. And so, you know, something in there somewhere, negative two, and then I am using negative two, I'll maybe use positive two. So let's see what those are. Put this in y equals and just see what you get for values there, and then we'll compare. So let's see what we got. I have um, these values, and then I decided, you know, at two it's one. I would like to see that it's going to get super close to zero and so I just went to 10 because that's going to be on my graph and it was already 0.5 so I felt like that was a good point uh, to plot as we go so now that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to plot those points on here and um, so at negative 10 it's negative 1.4, so someplace around there oops sometimes I put little x's because it's hard for me to always draw them on here. At negative 6, it's negative 7, which would be right there. And really, to me, that's going to be enough. I know this is going to go out to negative or to 0. And um, so, and then here, it's going to go to negative infinity. And then let me plot a couple of these points. At negative 2, Oops, negative 2, it's 2.3. At positive 2, it's 1. And at 10, I think it was 0.5. Let me just make sure, yeah. And so this one is going to go to positive infinity up here. So it's going to come down from positive infinity. 
and and kind of go like that. So that is what my oops my graph is going to look like as I go. And I don't have to plot every single point along there. Uh, you know, I, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect as we go. Uh, but that is uh, the vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, intercepts, and graph of the function. And we stated the domain right away. So um, that is what this one looks like. Now, um, and you could graph that on your graphing calculator to kind of see and compare. So actually, let's, I'm going to pause this and just for this one for sure, um, I'll look at that just to validate that I, I did a good job. And let's just look at that. Here's my rule, 7 over x plus 5. Here's my graph. You know, not, not always super easy to tell exactly where that asymptote is as we go. Uh, and the newer graphing calculators don't connect the dots usually. Occasionally they do um, because, you know, the graphing calculator isn't intelligent. It is just connecting a bunch of points. And so sometimes uh, the technology is there to recognize that asymptote and sometimes it's not. Uh, then, moving on to B, um, same kind of problem. So um, let us uh, go through this. 2B, f of x is x plus 1 over x squared minus 4. So we'll work on the domain first, and we're going to take the denominator, x squared minus 4, set it equal to 0, and so x squared equals positive 4, square root of each side, x equals plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2. And um, so those are our our unallowed points, unallowed, I think that might be right. Uh, so the domain is a set of all x such that x does not equal negative 2, uh, and x does not equal positive 2, and x is an element of the real numbers. If we give that uh, in interval notation, we would say the domain uh, it goes from negative infinity to negative 2, union with negative 2 to positive 2, union with 2 to infinity. And maybe I'm going to write, just slide that over above here, just so that I don't have everything in the same spot. So let me kind of reconfigure things. There we go. Um, so several ways that we can do the domain. Usually, I'm going to do my vertical asymptotes kind of right away, and there will be vertical asymptotes here. Um, and I don't remember, you know, if I factor this, it's x plus 1, x plus 2, x minus 2. And so nothing cancels. That's really where we get that whole idea. Um, but we're good to go here. And so our vertical asymptotes... are going to be at x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. And so we'll draw those in kind of right away. There's two of those, uh, negative 2 and positive 2. Sometimes I don't do a super great job when I'm up at first, so I kind of have to move it after I get it on there. So there's this one. Oop. Just kidding. And here's our other one. There, that's in a pretty good location. Now I want to figure out what my horizontal asymptotes are. So horizontal asymptotes. So this is x to the low, because this is x to the 1 over x to the 2. So uh, it's x to the 1 over x to the 2. So it's x to the low over x to the high. And so our vertical or horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. So we'll put that one in. as we go. So now this one divided this into like six different locations. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to change the color of that exactly. Let me let me make sure I 
quit that. Um, so now we've kind of got this area over here. We've got this one below it. We've got this. We've got that. We've got that. We've got that. So we've got six places. There's The graph can be in three of those places because we can't, you know, we're not going to have something here and here or it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. So um, we have to figure out, in my mind, it's probably going to go like that there or like that. Uh, same out here. It's going to go like that or like that but in the oh just kidding in the middle here it could do a lot of things just a second i have to get rid of that um in the middle there um oh, it could do several things and so things that could happen um is it could go uh from you know, here to here, and maybe it's crossing there. Um, you know, it, it could go like this. Um, you know, it can cross in here, you know, even close over here. So that asymptote is not, you know, a deal breaker, the horizontal asymptote. So uh, next we want to look at our uh, zeros and um, intercepts. So uh, the x-intercept is when y equals zero, so that's when the numerator is equal to zero, x plus one equals zero. So x equals negative one, so that gives us the point negative one, zero. So I'm gonna plot that, negative one, zero. So it actually does, it's gonna at least touch it, probably cross it. The y-intercept is when x equals zero. If we put in x equals zero, y equals uh, 1 over negative 4, it looks like. So uh, that's going to be 0, negative 0.25. A little hard to graph that, but I'll get it. Uh, so kind of maybe right there. That's as close as I'm going to get for that one. And um, now we want to... Uh, do our, our interval table. And so when we do that, we're going to go from negative infinity. We're going to stop at all asymptotes and zeros. So that means that I'm going to stop uh, here at negative 2. I'm going to stop here at, I think that was negative 1. I'm going to stop here at positive 2, and then I'm going to go to infinity. So I'm going to go negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2 to negative 1, negative 1 to 2, and then 2 to positive infinity. So those are going to be my intervals. Let me get rid of some of that yellow that I want to find some values in. And I am just going to have to scoot this down and, and start making this table as we go. So I think I said negative, oh, don't want a thick marker, sorry. Um, I think I said negative infinity to uh, negative 2. And then, oops, I forgot to label this. This is the interval. And then x values and y values, f of x values. Uh, then from negative 2 to... Uh, negative 1, and then from negative 1 to positive 2, and then from 2 to infinity. And, you know, this is just to give our, ourselves a, a good uh, picture of kind of where these things are um, as, we, as we go. And so let's just pick some values. You know, sometimes it's unclear what would be good values. Um, I'm just going to pick maybe negative 3. I might pick negative 10, but sometimes they're just so tiny it's hard to see. Um, this one, I'm going to pick negative 1.5. Um, there's not a lot in between those. I already have zero here, so kind of in between these two. Maybe I'll just pick positive one for that one. And then two to infinity, I'll just pick positive three. So take a moment, see what you get for those values. Okay, let's see what we got here. Um, I have, oh, just going the wrong way there. Let me, 
I have these values, and then we're going to plot those and see what that graph looks like. So then we want to plot those points on here and kind of see what happens there. So I did plot mine. And to, to just be honest with you, if I have this barrier and this barrier, I know it's not going to cross this axis because I've already found all of the x-intercepts. Uh, and so then with just one point, I know that it's going to hug those two asymptotes. So I know exactly what it's going to look like there. Same thing on that last set. I only have one point, but I know it's just going to hug those asymptotes, so it's going to look like that because it can't cross because there's no other um, zeros. But then here, it, it kind of looks like it's coming up because it's going to hug that asymptote. Oops, I went a little. And then it's going to go kind of like that and then hug uh, that asymptote up like that. So now, um, you know, I kind of like to plan it a little bit. And now I'm going to draw in uh, what that is going to look like. And I think, oops, I'll use this thin pen and I'll, I'll kind of use this. So There's one piece of it, the second piece. Maybe I'll just slide this up just a little so I can draw it better. And of course it is not uh, quite like I have it there. It's a little more curvy, but uh, it's the best I can do sometimes on here. And then that one kind of looks like that. So there is our graph of x plus 1 over x squared minus 4. And um, we have found all of the things that we needed to. Very involved problems, but kind of, kind of interesting as we go. And again, go ahead and check that on your graphing calculator. Uh, if you want, and, and kind of see what that looks like. And I'll, I'll show that. We'll move on to the next one. And so just to check that, uh, here is the rule in my calculator. Here's the picture of the graph. You know, not super easy to exactly see, but I feel like I'm in the right general uh, places when I, when I kind of check it that way uh, as we go. My expectation, graph paper, drawing in the asymptotes, straight edge, um, using that cardstock or whatever as we go. Um, the next one is, is this number three. And um, we're going to look at this one. There's some trickiness there. I'm just going to kind of pre-warn you. And um, so if you want to get a little start on this, go ahead and maybe find um, find the factored form of that. And if you have time, or we'll do this next time, uh, maybe the factored form and the domain. If you would do those things, um, you know, you'll have a little sense of that if there's time. Otherwise, we'll do that at the next uh, part of this. Have a great rest of your day.